It's H E B water, bro. H E B. It doesn't H-E-B. say that on here though, so I don't know if I can believe it. Oh, it does. It does, bro. I repent. Yeah. In Jesus name. Herbert Edward Butts. I thought you were joking. No, no, it's Harry. I think I'm gonna look it up. What does H E B stand for? We um Harry. Harry Butts. No, there's no way his name is Harry. No, no mother would allow such a thing. Howard okay. E. Butts. Okay. Howard E. Butts. Howard E. Butts. Howard E. Butts. Okay. <laughs> Dang, man. That's a nice Well, that's way better than Harry. Nowadays, the initials also stand for here, everything's better. Oh, okay. So a little adjustment. That's their new slogan. Here, everything's, everything's better. better. Well, they came up with that on the flight. Like, props to their marketing department. In H-E-B, it's better. Well, we're back. We're back again. We took a, we took a little we took a little break. Siesta. Yeah, and uh, it's it's been four days. We're on our fourth day of recording. Yeah, man. Not it's not been great not, great week here. Yeah, I know. It's 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 been a balmy. Well, I think it's probably seventy degrees in here now. But uh, in here, yeah. yeah. Sixty is like. Uh, were you cold last night? I was cold last night. Were you really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you sleep better when you're cold. You do. So and you I do. slept hard, man. Good. So it's good. perfect. Good. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think when I got up this morning, it was sixty-four. Okay, in the house. Yeah, that's. So you can't you can't do that in Orlando. Really? There's no way. Not only will your electric bill be insane, but you'll uh, you'll mess up your air conditioner. Yeah, and yeah. I don't do that during the summer. Oh. Okay. But since it was what sixty-five out last night, sixty-seven. I, I think it almost got down to the high fifties. Did it? Okay. I, I think that's why it was. That's why it got down. Normally, it's between. Well, it's only a degree higher, sixty-five to sixty-six. Oh, whoa! 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 <laughs> Hey, one degree water can freeze. Just one degree difference. That's That'll a preach. Point. That's That'll a good preach. point. That'll preach. Well, man, you had a question, right? Yes, yeah, right so I was going to ask you, uh, you. You've said this a few times that one of the key parts of being a man, and I think this would even apply to being a woman, but in, for the context of masculinity. I've never been one. Yeah, no, I don't know. First thing, but how does one know or find out who they are? I think the best way you you have to know who you are is you got to get alone. I know I, I have in growing up I was like this at times too. There are a lot of men who are never alone. They always got a buddy with them, and then they get into a relationship and they never go out with their girlfriend or even their spouse alone. There's always another couple there, and they can never do anything alone. You've got to get alone and sometimes block out all the voices. It's good to have a multitude of counsel. Totally. It's I mean that's that's scriptural. Yeah. But you also got to know who you are. Like, how does this really make me feel? Yeah. How do I want to respond to this? Yeah. How do I actually feel about this? It's this really a big deal or was I being hypersensitive or were there people around? So I try to be a little tougher than I normally am because I had an audience, mm. but it really wasn't that big of a deal. And and I've been there, you know, it's like, what'd you say to me? You yeah. know, and it, it really wasn't that big of a deal. And if, if nobody would have been there, I'd have been like, you're goofy, you know, and just so you've, you've got to have some alone time. You really have to have some alone time, but you got to have some mentors too that you can. And, and the great thing about mentors, um, what's that? Tony Robbins. Is that his name or Tony? Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the, the guy uh, who talks positive. like this, you know, yeah. Just, where's yeah. the, uh, Irish hat or whatever. The, where's like the, it's like a clover. I, I, I think he does. Yeah. But he has, he does huge guy. Huge. Yeah. He's massive. Yeah. He does the cold plunge. He's okay. got it built. He's got it built into the ground at his house. My man. It's like it looks like an air conditioner, about the size of an air conditioner, but it. You know, he's like six seven, six eight. And he jumps right down in it. My but even he will tell you, people that go to his self help stuff, you've got to take the pieces that I'm giving you and create your own formula. Hmm. I can't give you the. This is the formula I found, and these are the formulas some of the people I have with me have found. And they have built it their own, but you've got to you got to become the key to your own success, and quit riding people's coattails, hmm. and and realize I got to get through this life. And if I'm not careful, I'll do it alone. And sometimes it's okay to be alone. I've been alone for a while, and it it it's it's it has uh, created issues and problems in relationship because here's why. Let's say I'm dating a woman. And I don't hear from you. 
doesn't bother me. My mind doesn't go to, oh, she must be doing this. She must be doing that. Mm. No. I, I, or, or question I, yeah. yourself. Yeah. I, oh, I must not be good enough. Doesn't oh, bother me at all. Okay. So if I can go two days, three days without hearing from you, and then you text me like, hey, but then I won't reach out to you either. And then it'd be like, well, how come you hadn't talked to me? Well, I, you know, I hadn't heard from you either. Well, why didn't you talk to me? I didn't have anything to say. <laughs> you know? And I was eating steak and watching football. I was eating I steak know. and watching football. <laughs> But the importance of alone time is is really getting in that quiet place. And and for me, it is having some prayer time because prayer time and God and the Word of God brings me back to who I am. Mm -hmm. If I quit praying and I quit having that communion with God, I become who I am. Mm -hmm. I become that, that this yeah. And things that didn't affect me at first, and then suddenly I realized, well, I'm slacking a little bit. <laughs> Dude, I get so cranky. I get cranky, frustrated, irritable, you know? Yeah. It's crazy. So when you find out who you are, you will begin to identify your triggers. When you don't know who you are, sometimes things bother you. You don't even know why they bother you. But when you start identifying, like, these scenarios put me in in a bad mood. Well, don't go to those scenarios. Yeah, it, put, some, put some caution tape around those. Like, I, I, yeah. I had a guy friend growing up, and he's like, man, every time I go out, I get in a fight. And I'm like, okay, well, go going out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Yeah. yeah, or change where you're going, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was like that saying, you know, I told you earlier, like, it's like, well, you know, I got a thyroid problem. Well, quit eating thyroid. Yeah. You know, like if <laughs> yeah. you got an issue with certain areas, don't go there. Yeah. And that sounds really juvenile, but it's scriptural. Yeah. Run. Flee. Get away from it. Pack up your bags. Pack up your bags and, and go. Re- go. Go regroup. Yeah. Go regroup. Yeah. And so for you, here you are, you are. 31? 31. 31. Proverbs yes, 31. Yeah, you know. Hallelujah. I'm going to be a Proverbs 31 woman. You know how many times <laughs> I've heard that? Probably a lot. A lot. Yeah. I'm like, hit the road. Yeah. Hit the road. <laughs> Man. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. So you're 31. 31. You, but you, you've, had some, you've had a lot of life experience. You've been places. You've seen so many things. And you are probably in, the, in position in life that you have enough self-awareness to realize your limited abilities and area. Oh yeah, totally. Well, know what I can speak into, what I should not speak into. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. Well, that, that makes you effective mm. because in dealing with people and dealing with scenarios, um, you know, I, I, I shared with you about, about, um, Donna late at our church who I'm mean, I love her mm. ran into her at HEB. And her husband was a prince among men. She lost him. And there I was in H-E-B and run into her in front of the milk and she just spills. And and I didn't even know what to say because, A, I, I don't know what it's like to have that type of experience, that emotion. She spilled her heart. Her heart. She didn't spill milk. She didn't spill. Yeah, yeah she yeah, didn't yeah. spill yeah. milk. <laughs> she spilled her heart. Yes. And all I could do is just put my arms around her and, and, and weep with her. Hmm. And instead of me feeling like I had to have the answer... Well, you know, sister, you know, the word of God the says in Proverbs God. 31, yeah. if you are a Proverbs 31 woman, yeah. no, 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 no. Uh, and I love Donna enough. If I would have said that, she'd have slapped me in the face because she's a good woman. <laughs> that's, that's what I love about Donna. She <laughs> would have been awesome. like, excuse me. Yeah. Like, and, and that's the, th- that's the great thing about real people. If you've been to church with a bunch of fake people who are perfect, they put a bitter taste in your mouth. Yeah, absolutely. If you've been to church with people who love Jesus and say, Hey, I'm fighting the good fight. I'm doing everything I can for my family to make it. Mm. Boy, you get around the cream of the crop, and you're like, man, these people are awesome. Yes. That goes with pastors. I've been around arrogant, arrogant pastors who think they are gods, that God should be great that they chose to follow him. Yeah. Like, God should be proud of like me. Like, God, God is blessed to yeah. have me as his I'm here. Praise, servant. Praise me as we worship the Lord. You know, yeah. like, and everybody sees through that. Yeah, it, it's really true. It is true. There's a saying there. They said that uh, I'd rather be loved for who I am. Or sorry, I'd rather be hated for who I am than loved for who I'm not. 
Yes. That's that's such a good phrase. But I think it also works the other way where I would rather spend time with somebody that is just themselves, even if it's even if it's rough around the edges. Yeah. Even if they can be a little bit mean sometimes or, or if they're not if they don't if they're not as polished or whatever. Are you, you talking know? about me? Well, I don't want to say anything. Yeah, I'm like, know, dang. I'd much rather be around get somebody that, that's a real Texan. Cookie? A real Texan. A real Texan. Rather than somebody from New York City pretending like they're a Texan. And we all know you're wearing skinny jeans and a beanie. You're not from Texas. Yeah, no, you you're know, not from Texas. It's, way, it's just way better for everybody. So not only are you more confident if you could just be you, but people will also understand. And they'll see whether or not you're being really you or if you're trying to be something that you think you should be or whatever. You know, Men, women. And if you can, and, and I've tried to instill this in my daughter, you are not going to like and get along with every person you meet. Mm. Don't undersell your values and who you are to get acceptance from people that you really don't even, you realize they're just going to be, you're not going to be for everybody and everybody's not going to be for you. Mm -hmm. The only people who think that way are politicians. And then after voting season, they're done with you. Yeah. Dan Move Crenshaw, on. you know. Yeah, I, I'm being for real. And and when people can learn that I'm not for everybody and everybody's not for me, mm. boy, that gives you freedom and being yourself. Yeah, no kidding. Instead of feeling like, well, I, you know, I've I've got to be, you know, uh, just like them and agree with everything they say so they like me. Yeah. Uh, don't be a yes person. Yeah, man. Don't don't be a yes man. Yeah, that's I've I've been <clears throat> learning a lot lately how to how to still learn from everyone, but think for myself. That's good. Why? Well, yeah. You know, like be able to learn from anybody, no matter, even if you're of a different religion or even if you're from a different country or if you are of a different sports team, like I can still learn from anyone, right? Like, I mean, Balaam learned from a donkey. I mean, I'm just saying like we can learn from anybody, but I, I've been learning how to think for myself, but that doesn't mean think on an Island and not let anybody in. Like you said earlier, yeah. we need to have counselors to come and challenge those thoughts. Yeah. We need to take our thoughts to somebody that we can trust and say, Hey, am I on the right track or am I, am I going crazy? You know? And I'm, I'm a firm believer, you know, when the word of God talks about not letting novices in certain positions. Yeah. And we've always thought that, you know, that must mean the pulpit and you got to be ready in season and out of season. We take that to preaching. Hmm. No, that my parents have been together for 50 years. 50 years. It's incredible. They can give tons of insight to a lot of people, but to people who've been through horrific divorce, dealt with betrayal, different things like that, they really can't speak into their, they can speak into their life about, Hey, you're going to make it. But to sit there and listen and give, give a, a heartfelt response. I have no clue what you're dealing with. Yeah. I've had a great relationship. We've had our issues and our problems, but I, so I think a lot of times we try to take on things that we shouldn't be taking on. Mm. And what what is what is it about every time somebody wants to do something, it's got to be grandiose. The Lord's calling me to Africa. Mm. You've never even walked across the street and knocked on your neighbor's door yeah. and invited him to church, and you're going to go to Africa? Be a great evangelist. Yeah. Yeah. Start. It's going to start here and then all of Judea. Right. But if you can't do it here, we're not going what here. What makes you think you'll do it anywhere else? Yeah. Absolutely. And if you, and if you do do it somewhere else and you don't do it at home, there's an issue. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's the truth. And, and that's that I think tackling things that we have no, I don't want to use the word authority. We have no, uh, reasoning to be in that place. Yeah. There's no reason for us to be there. Get the right people. Uh, we have ladies in our church that they put on a grief, a grief class for people who've lost husbands, spouses, and loved ones. I never have. So you would not be the right person no, for the job. No. Yeah. People would be looking at me like, you have no clue how I feel. Yeah. And, and, and we, in our human nature, we, we always want to say like, I understand. I get it. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you don't. Yeah. Right. Sometimes you don't bro. Yeah. It's the truth. And we got to maneuver through those waters. You know, we, and I think part of being balanced is also recognizing my stomach's talking is also yeah, recognizing uh, is also recognizing your failures. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think that's a super attractive trait in people when they can boast in their weakness. I think, I think that's awesome. I think it exudes confidence. 
personally, you know? I mean, and that I don't know. I don't know. When somebody can tell me that like when they can make fun of themselves, laugh at themselves and be 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 honest about what they're what they're bad at. I'm like, "Man, you're really secure. That's awesome." And sometimes the areas you're bad at, it can also mean you're really good at. Mm. Man, there's some detrimental things in my life that I'm really good at. Hmm. Like really good. Wow. So Wow. Just because you're good at it doesn't mean doesn't it's, mean it's a good thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, sometimes we can't have those honest confessions, especially with fellow believers. Like, you know, what did Paul say? Hey, look, I was the chief among sinners. Of, of, among sinners, I was yeah. good at it. Yeah. At what I did, and you know, we don't we don't have that honest confession. It's more like, no, I'm blessed and highly favored, and and you know, I'm going to have a mansion, and I'm going to have this. Well, that well, okay, well, that's cool. Good for you, man. Yeah, that's great. Um, but who are you really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you know, Jocko. Jocko Willink or Willink? I yeah, love yeah, Willink. Yeah, whatever. I love it. Says the same. He's got a book with uh, Leif Babin. Yes. Uh, extreme accountability. Is that why you wake up at four thirty in the morning? It's all because of him. Do you ever see him take a picture of his watch? All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. I set my alarm to four thirteen a.m. You should take because it's Philippians four thirteen. I can do all <laughs> oh, things God. through Christ. It gives me <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, we got one of those guys. Here's the problem: it doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> no, it's news. I'm like I cannot do all. Things. What's wrong? With I can't do that. Yeah, but uh, that book, Extreme Ownership, one. It, it is the greatest book on leadership I've ever heard. And one of the things that they – well, it, it's extreme ownership. So when you get it wrong, you say, hey, I really screwed up. I made the wrong call on this. And here's what, how, what I learned from it, and here's what we're going to do to right the ship. I love that so much. And when somebody's able to say, hey, I'm sorry. I really screwed that up. I was wrong. I I love that because that's nowhere in society today. Nowhere but think in about, the public eye. Think about Jocko and think about David. These guys, especially a lot of these guys in the military – you are only as strong as your weakest point. Yeah. And they have to be strong in so many areas because their weakness can, will hurt the whole, hurt the whole group. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, we would love to have David on, but uh, y'all would probably come burn my house down. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have the, the beat machine. Actually, I do. Beeps on here. Oh, there you go. But that wouldn't bother me. That's he's being who he is. Yeah. He's sure. that's that's he, that is he's not going to change. The guy's what in his forties or fifties? I think so. That's who he is. So let him be him. Yeah. If you don't like it, change the channel. Yeah. You know, there's lots of flavors out there, but but when it comes to planning, those are the people you want to listen to. Oh, for sure. Even if he drops seventy five f bombs. Yeah. But when it comes to executing a plan and following through with it, those those, those people, are the guys. those are the guys. Yes. They get it done again because they've been there. They've got experience. Yep. It's gonna, not just theory. I'm going to be a diabetic by the time we're done. <laughs> I, I, so, I told you I, I don't, don't know why we brought these in. I know. Dude, what is what cats. is an area in in your life that you look at and you say I want to master that? I, I sugar 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 really? yeah sugar's a drug man. Oh my word! I I just I wanted to I started to my wife and I are going to finish a documentary on sugar. We found it on YouTube. It's a uh, it's something that I realize. That I keep myself in pretty good shape. I keep myself in check, yeah, you, you know. Great, man. But thank you. But I, I know, and my wife can attest, man. Like there are there are times, there are moments where I will just like, I'm. I feel like my personality is like all or nothing, you know. Yeah. I feel like that's probably a lot of people, and it's that way with sugar. You know, sometimes I can like I can control myself, but bro, if there's a pack of double stuff Oreos in the cupboard oh. and I eat one. You better believe at least six are going down. And I, I feel like that's too much. But anyway, this is my thing. Well, I noticed last night whenever we said, hey, y'all want to go get some ice? You didn't say no. That's because Peyton was so jacked. Th- that is true. She was. Yeah. We'll blame it on Peyton. It, uh, yeah. Great move, Jake. Blame the daughter. Wow. You know, the great thing about uh, about uh, a kid is you get, to, you get to let them take the brunt. Oh, I can't make it. You know, Peyton's not, not feeling well. Or, no, you know, Peyton's got something going on. And, <laughs> which is normally true. I mean, at her age, there's always something going on. Um, That's what John Chris said about COVID. Did you hear that bit? No. It's so funny, man. He's like, I'm going to miss COVID. You could literally get out of anything. You just had to pick which side of the aisle you were on. I tested positive. I can't make it. Yeah. Pretty. it's like At oh. one time, it was two weeks. Yeah, right. And they just got rid of that. 
Now it's the CDC revoked the two week thing. Yeah, they, like treat it as you would a flu. Basically, do it. Which I remember somebody. I mean, they were saying it's like a flu in the very beginning, and they re- they uh, revoked their ivermectin stuff. Funny, the uh, the FDA or was this? I think the FDA revoked what they said about the. You mean all the horrible things they said about Joe Rogan? Yeah, literally, there was a tweet from the FDA. He's taking horse medicine. You're a moron. Ivermectin won awards for Nobel saving. Nobel Peace Prize, didn't it? Yeah. Or no, not a Nobel Peace no, Prize. No. Uh, uh, it was a huge thing. Yeah. Won, won, won a deal because it saved so many people over in India. Yeah. Horse tranquilizers and horse medicines. People are stupid. Yeah. They believe anything that comes on the lying one or the TV, anything they say, go do your own research. Go do your own, you know. Yeah. That's just when Think it comes. for yourself. When it comes to the Bible. Don't listen to what your pastor says. Listen to him. Go home and open it up and make sure that guy's not deceiving you. Yeah, man. Make sure he's teaching you the sound doctrine of the word. But guess what? Men, you should be the pastors of your home. Yes, you are the priest of your household. Your house. Of your family. I've heard preachers say, you probably have too. Maybe not, but I've heard preachers say, preachers that I look up to, look looked up to, say, don't question, don't question the things I'm saying. That Don't be religious. I'd get him walk out if somebody said that. Oh, yeah. I'd be like, see ya. That, that was like, I was, I was really young in my faith at that time. But now, that's, I mean, that's horrible. Bro, you're from Missouri. You're from the show me state. The show me state. Yeah. Yeah, show like, me the word. <laughs> show me. If you're going to say it, yeah. back it up doctrinally. Yeah, not, I, don't, I don't want your prophetic dream. Yeah. I don't want, the, I don't want you cherry pick. I don't even want you cherry picking Psalms to like, to enforce whatever it is that you're wanting to like you're trying to get this agenda across and you want to make this point and then you start like just stealing verses to help shape. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, and the Psalms, the Psalms are so amazing because David, who is a chief musician, like the guy could write one Psalm is talking about how great God is. And the next Psalm's like, Oh, wretched. I am going to die. You know? And it's like, <laughs> why have you forsaken me? You, you go through and you get to see the ups and downs of somebody's lives. People do not live on highs constantly. You don't come to God and you live high on the mountain yeah. all the time. Yes. You don't have the Moses experience where God reveals his glory. You're going to go through the dry places and you're going to go through it, it. That is part of it. And if you're listening to this and you think that's not true, you don't know your Bible. Then you haven't studied the men and women of God. Yes. I was officiating a wedding for a dear, dear friends of ours. I thought you and, meant for a deer. Uh, like, yeah. Oh, it was oh. a really unique thing back to the garden of Eden or something, but we were, uh, we were in Colorado officiating this wedding and it was, uh, it was so beautiful. Just uh, mountains everywhere. Oh, right. it was great. It was awesome. Yeah. But, uh, but I felt like the Lord spoke to me. I felt like I, or the Holy spirit was revealing like that exactly what you just said that mountain being on the mountaintop is amazing. It takes a lot of work to get there. Mm-hmm. A lot of work. And when you're there, it's amazing. You get the best view. It's like the reward of the hard work, but you cannot survive. And this is what I shared actually at their wedding. Um, was, you know, in marriage, you're going to have peaks and you're going to have valleys mm-hmm. and the peaks are great, but you, you literally can't live there. Like okay. if you just take any mountain, any summit, you can't live on it because there's no shelter. There's no food. There's no vegetation. You can't survive. That's good. You have to descend into the valleys until you get to the next peak. Cause down in the valleys, that's where you get the vegetation. That's where the animals and the critters are roaming. That's where you can get the water. That's where you can get all the things you need shelter, all of it. It's, it's actually in the valley, but David said in Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And so I, you go from, you, to get from peak to peak, you got to go through the valley. And I've been there. So the you valley of the shadow of death is actually the valley of Gohim, which was the trash dump. You went to the actual... Yes. Okay, that's right. So when David is saying, yeah, I walked through the valley of the shadow of death... When you get to Jerusalem, now I'm like getting this, I get I, I, this stuff Go. excites me. So when David is there, when you see Bethlehem and you see Jerusalem, they're not that far off. Hmm. The city of David's not far. It is when you got to go by a donkey or, or, or walk it. Or walk, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, in a vehicle, you're there, but he is walking in between that valley, the Valley of Gohim, which is called the Valley of the Shadow of Death because it was the trash heap and the trash dump. So mm. there was definitely metaphorical to that, but it was also a place. Mm, yeah. um, I love Israel. I, I want to go so bad. If we're able to go back, you're going with us. If okay. we're able to go back. We oh. had a trip planned for February, but we had to cancel with everything going on. Of course. Of course. Um, That's but been a dream. Man. It is. A dream. There is no, I, I tell you, I, when I went, we got into, uh, uh, we got into, 
Tel Aviv. I think it was Tel Aviv, my brain. We were staying right there on the Mediterranean, right at, right, right past Jaffa or whatever it was. Okay. And, and we get there, and, and it was great, man. We went and saw we went and saw a lot of places. Uh, we stayed on the kibbutz in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. Two o'clock in the morning, Thad and I, commandeer, I'll say it like that, yeah. a surfboard. And we go out, way out in the Sea of Galilee. Uh, no way. We're, uh, just, just, I mean, we're out there like two in the morning floating. I mean, but bro, I'm like that though. Wait, at two in the morning. Yeah. So it's it's pitch black. It's pitch black. With the stars out. Oh, yeah. Oh. And you, now you sit and you see when Jesus is talking about how you can't be hidden, when he says a city on a hill, that's where he was. And when you look up and you see all these cities. So anyways, it was yeah. great. So, I mean, all that was impressive. But when we went up to Jerusalem and we got to the Kidron Valley, hmm. and I'm not a real emotional person. I am emotional when it comes to my daughter. Um I actually went through a real emotional time for a while, but it's because my, my hormones were out of whack and my estrogen oh, sure. was too high. Man. I was just crying all the time, man. I'm like, what's <laughs> wrong with me? This is midlife crisis. No, <laughs> no, no, just hormones. Just hormones. You um, choked up yesterday. You were talking about the grace. About the dude, grace of God. Grace of God is, is yeah. But Kidron Valley, tell me about yeah, that. Yeah, so we come up to the Kidron Valley and, and right over there at the top of the Mount of Olives, that's where Christ, is, you know, he ascended. Hmm. And when you look through the Mount of Olives and you look through that gate that's still in the temple wall that they have sealed up. And the reason they sealed it up is because they know when Christ returns, he is going to come through that gate. So they said, well, we'll seal it up. And then they came through and they built all of the tombs and graves down in that valley because they know um, he would be unclean if he ever walked over those graves. So they think they're going to, but the problem is there's always earthquake quakes. And, and uh, so anyways, it was a real emotional, like, and it wasn't like, I have walked the steps of Jesus. I have touched the stones. No, it was like, this place is real. Yeah. Like that was Israel. And you got emotional. I got emotional. And I'm. Uh, what what got you? It's real. It's, when you look and you see the tomb of Absalom and Jeremiah mm. and you start seeing Rachel's tomb, like you start seeing that stuff. Yeah. It, it's like, wow, this, this, like. This is real. Everything I've read about. Yeah. It's, it's like, yeah. And, and, uh, it, 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 and we got to go up to the Temple Mount, which we were one of the first groups that got to go there, got to walk through where the stone is, where God created, uh, where God created man right there. Like it's, it's unreal. And of course they built the, they Wait, built the, the, st- the stone where God created man. That'll take hours. Okay. That'll take hours. Okay. Um, but that like, is like Garden of Eden spot. I'm sorry, not where God created man. Um, my, I just had a brain fart. Oh no, that's okay. Um, no, the Garden of Eden is. Um, the Garden of Eden is. I was tripping. I was yeah. thinking, what no. the stone where God made me? No, 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 no. What is happening? The stone where. The stone where the Ark of the Covenant set. Oh, that's what I meant. Okay. And in that that stone, you can still see the carvings in the stone where it's set. No way. Yeah. No way. Like it became so real. Like this was the stories that people hear and you don't have a tangible, uh, you, you can't ever see it. You know, it's just a story. Yeah. But then you go in there and you actually see it. It, it, uh, it was a revelation to me, like a, a confirmation on the things that I've read. And, and, and it was, it, it was just emotional for me. Mm. And I, you know, I shed some tears. And once again, the only thing that ever really makes me is God. And my daughter, my daughter can make me, she can make me a bubbling idiot, uh, and, uh, or hormonal problems. You know? <laughs> that estrogen, man. That estrogen, man. What, what was the best part of Israel? I mean, your favorite, like the, like a monumental, maybe it was the Ark of the Covenant spot. It was that it really was the whole experience. Um, your favorite site. So we got to go into the rabbi's town. Oh, favorite part is. We went through the tunnel of, it's through Gihon Springs, and all we had was a candle in this narrow, narrow, narrow passageway that came all the way out to where the Pool of Siloam was, and we are hundreds of feet underground, walking through with a candle. Not a wide room like this, and I'm a big guy. Yeah, My shoulders are pressed together, and I'm hunched over, and we walked all the way through in knee-deep water underground. That was amazing. Why? What made that? It sounds like that would be terrifying for some people. I'm an adventurist. 
Okay. The C, the, so the like adrenaline of being in something crazy. Yeah, or? yeah. And I blew my candle out. You know, I was, like, <laughs> okay. I was messing with people, and yeah. uh, I loved going down the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea was amazing. Mm. Um, you know, that was a cool experience. Eating out there and eating the chickpeas and the falafels and different stuff. That was the other thing. I'd never had that stuff in my life. Chickpeas, falafels go in. Five minutes later, you got to find a bathroom. They're coming out. <laughs> okay. uh, and what people don't realize, a lot of those places, you have to pay to use the bathroom. Oh, and I, I'm shoot. running ahead, and I'm like, you're going to have to shoot me. i got to go to the bathroom. You're going to have to shoot me. And <laughs> and our guy, Danny's like, oh, I'll take care of it. You know, and he's paying him. you, you got to pay to use the bathroom. Wow. It's not like America. Yeah, I guess not. Yeah. Or you can go out in the sand. God bless America. Yeah. It was so there were there were so many things to it. And we were there, I think, ten or twelve days. So we did a lot. Wow. Um, you learn a lot about culture, about like drinking, like American culture. Everybody's like, oh, 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 you know, let's get drunk. They're not like that over there. They'll drink wine almost with every meal. Mm. Uh, they're they have just there's always an exception to the rule, but sure. everybody's very respectful of alcohol. You know, they don't think anything of. I'm gonna sit down and drink twenty. What's well, like I say this to people? Do you like milk? Because I have guys, well, I just like to taste a beer. I'm like, well, that's awesome. You like milk? Yeah. Do you ever drink 17 glasses of milk in a row? Well, no. <laughs> that's a great point. But you'll drink 17 that's beers? A great like, point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Now, let's take a break. Let's come back. Let's